the sixth uh, part of elements of neural network and deep learning part six my name is Tidhiya V. Ganesh uh, for this presentation I have used material from neural networks and deep learning uh, by Professor Adroing uh, from uh, deep learning AI at Coursera and other material from the internet now let us look at two common terms which is uh, used in machine learning and uh, also in deep learning is the term of bias and variance when a machine learning model has a high bias, then that model does not take into account the variation in the data and it is said to underfit the data. And a model is set, supposed to, said to have high variance when the model learns all the extraneous information, even the noise, and it tends to overfit the data, but it does not generalize well. So we have these uh, two terms, bias and variance. And something very important is the bias and variance trade-off. Let's take a simple example. Let us assume we have a parameter x and a output y. And uh, <coughs> if we plot the points, we see that uh, the points are uh, uh, on these, uh, as on these uh, dots uh, in, in this <coughs> particular uh, graph. And an uh, a ML model, which when you, if you fit a straight line, then we say the model is underfits uh, this uh, this uh, particular uh, features because the model does not take into account the variation in the data. Alternatively, if you had a situation like this where uh, the feature X uh, and uh, the output Y have the shape, and we have a highly wavy kind of uh, a pattern uh, the, the model uh, takes then we say it overfits because it tries to it is too squiggly and it kind of uh, does not generalize well alternatively in the middle case you can see that if we have a curve like this then it uh, kind of uh, follows the pattern of uh, the features and the output so we say this is a good fit and it has a moderate bias and the variance typically in deep learning networks with many hidden layers they tend to overfit, that is, uh, they tend to uh, perform well on the training set, but they not perform uh, very well on the test or the validation set. So, we, there is a need to be able to uh, minimize this uh, overfitting, and uh, there are two techniques uh, that are used uh, to minimize this overfitting. And the first is the regularization uh, uh, technique. And there are two regulation techniques. The first is known as uh, L2 regulation in machine learning. This is also known as ridge regression. And the second one is L1 regularization. In machine learning uh, uh, terminology, it's also known as lasso regression. Let us look at uh, what these regulations do and how they prevent overfitting. So basically, in uh, the logistic loss uh, or uh, <coughs> M trading uh, samples is given as the logistic loss uh, of the estimated uh, uh, value of y, uh, that is y hat uh, for the ith sample with the actual value of the uh, yth value. And if we average all of this logistic loss uh, over the m trading examples, we get the logistic loss. Now, if you want to regularize this and we want to do regular, uh, L2 regulation, then we, what we do is to this logistic loss, we add the term lambda by 2m uh, <coughs> and the modulus of uh, weight. Uh, uh, <coughs> the whole squared. So this particular term where lambda is known as the regulation parameter, uh, we add this and uh, this is known as L2 regulation. And if we add the term lambda by 2m modulus of w, then it is called L1 regulation. And basically what these, uh, this regulation does is it penalizes, uh, penalizes the weights so that um, uh, it, it, it tends to shrink the weights of those features which do not affect the output too much and thus it tends to uh, minimize uh, the overfitting. That is, it, uh, it, you can say it almost kind of drops off some certain set of features and makes a much simpler model from your uh, input set of features and uh, with respect to the output variable. So it tends to regularize uh, the output. So this particular graph I have taken uh, as uh, from uh, my machine learning uh, which I had done and uh, you can see L2 regulation it penalizes the weights and coefficients so that features which don't influence the actual output are uh, have less influence and uh, the values tend to uh, 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 go close to zero so really if you look at this uh, graph 
the way it uh, it hap uh, uh, this uh, you, you have to interpret this is this is the value uh, lambda here it's given as alpha uh, for uh, when uh, lam uh, lambda is one then these weights have high values and it you you can tend to overfit but as the lambda is increased the weights tend to drop uh, or shrink and uh, so for example a lambda of let us say uh, 10 you will find there are some weights which are significant and many of the weights are actually very close to zero so this uh, particular method is also known as L2 regulation or um, it's in it's also known as ridge regulation and it, it does not make all the weights entirely zero it makes some of the weights very close to zero but it's a very effective technique and it's used in deep learning networks to prevent overfitting and this L1 regulation is uh, lasso regulation here in this case uh, uh, at uh, lambda is equal to 1 let's assume these are the weights of uh, the coefficients then as you tend to go towards the left some of the uh, let, let's say at this value you can see many of the weights have already reached 0 and this is known as lasso regulation uh, however the L2 regulation is more popularly used uh, than uh, L1 regulation so uh, the cost in a neural network with logistic loss is given by the average over this is the logistic loss y log uh, a uh, <coughs> into 1 minus i log al so this is the logistic loss and uh, over m trading examples you basically uh, add the term lambda by 2m uh, uh, modulus of uh, the weight the whole square and if you have uh, a deep learning network with, uh, with the weight matrix then over all the samples and over the entire weight matrix you would add this lambda term and sum it up and then if you run gradient descent uh, it will tend it uh, your uh, model will be regressed and it will prevent uh, overfitting to a large extent but you'll have to keep choosing the value of lambda uh, appropriately and tuning it so that you get uh, the, the model fits uh, very well and generalizes very well so I have used this uh, regulation technique in my code and this is how it uh, performed uh, for uh, uh, all the number of iterations for this uh, spiral data which I had uh, uh, discussed in my presentation 5. The next regulation technique I would like to uh, discuss is the dropout uh, regulation. This was used with uh, great uh, success uh, by uh, uh, Alex uh, Krzyzewski and uh, Professor Jeffrey Hinton uh, when they were uh, used it in uh, image uh, recognition and the way it works is let us assume I have a deep uh, uh, network with multiple hidden layers and uh, what dropout does is you, you choose a, a value known as key prop and this key prop can be any value uh, you can choose basically it denotes the probability of keeping an activation unit in, in the hidden layers so uh, this key prop, uh, what you will do, uh, what is done is we generate a random uh, uh, a, a vector of random numbers for each layer, and all uh, uh, values which are between zero and uh, one, which are uh, less than zero point eight, uh, we keep uh, we keep the activation unit, and all uh, vectors in the random number which are greater than zero point eight, we drop it, and so assuming uh, for this these two units have been dropped then uh, we'll only be left with these two units and what this uh, after we drop all the activation units based on the key prop for each of these different layers we uh, <coughs> the network will learn with the remaining activation units so essentially what happens is you you have a much simpler uh, neural network which is trying to learn for these input features and uh, uh, as I have already mentioned in my earlier uh, presentations for uh, green descent for one cycle of forward prop and uh, one cycle of uh, backward propagation where you determine the weights you have a, a simplified neural network and uh, at the end of the uh, each cycle you will generate a new set of weights and uh, in the in the in the in the again in the, when we're going in the forward prop we will again apply this uh, key prop and again drop random activation units in each of these layers and uh, uh, we will uh, again uh, go through the backward prop just one uh, point to be noted is 
the units which are uh, dropped in the forward propagation have to uh, also be uh, dropped in the backward propagation. So same units will be dropped in the backward uh, propagation cycle also. And um, we will uh, have the neural network learn with this uh, simplified network in each, uh, each of the cycles. And by choosing appropriate values of the key prop, we can get a good uh, uh, degradation uh, uh, effect on our uh, model. And uh, our model will uh, give us a, a much better fit and will generate much better uh, than uh, a, a fully uh, a blown uh, uh, <coughs> L-layer uh, deep learning network. In fact, I j just would like to mention, to some extent, this also reminds me of random forest where you have decision trees and uh, you, uh, you you just create an ensemble of uh, decision trees and uh, you choose a random number of features in each of the decision trees and uh, you make it learn and then you average out. To some extent, this kind of uh, technique of randomly uh, dropping uh, uh, activation units <coughs> and making the simplified neural network learn uh, uh, with the input set of features uh, kind of reminds me of the random forest and I thought I would like to mention that. Uh, so this is another, uh, so again, uh, in the as I said, in the forward and backward propagation, we drop another set of units. Uh, we take the same random uh, approach and we drop another set of units and uh, we make it learn. So going through the process, we get a regression. And uh, this is the output I got when I ran it with uh, Python with the uh, dropout technique. Uh, also, there's another problem in uh, deep networks is this vanishing and exploding gradients. Uh, in a very deep uh, learning network with multiple hidden layers, uh, what uh, can happen is uh, due to the effect of uh, multiple layers, the gradients can uh, either uh, uh, <clears throat> diminish uh, very rapidly and almost reach zero or it can explode it can uh, the grades can keep building up over each of the layers in the forward and backward population and actually uh, hit infinity okay so the way to handle this situation is by choosing uh, appropriate initialization uh, for uh, uh, <clears throat> during uh, when you're creating the uh, deep learning network so there are two techniques of initialization. One is known as the he in, uh, initialization, where uh, you choose a set of random weights uh, using uh, the regular random uh, distribution uh, in, your, in R or Python or Octave. And then you divide those weights by the square root of 2 and the dimension of the previous layer. So uh, depending upon uh, the previous layer, whether it had 3 activation units or 5 activation units or 100 activation units, you divide it by that dimension and uh, you use that as the weight in each of the head, in that particular layer and in Xavier we take the square root of 1 by the dimension of the previous uh, layer and here I have shown uh, based on this initial how it, it performs so these are two initial techniques which are used to handle this um, exploding and managing gradients by appropriately choosing the weights during initiation time. Thank you. And this ends uh, presentation 6.